What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 16 of the podcast. We've got uh, Brad Sassman with us today. Uh, Brad's a long-term member of Fight Fit, uh, and he's had four Fight Fit challenges. Yeah. Four. Also the owner of Squires Loft in Essendon and the sponsor of the podcast. So welcome to the podcast today, mate. Thanks, mate. How you doing? Pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> That's all right. I'm How feeling it? good. I'm feeling um, not as nervous as those guys downstairs, actually. Yeah. There's a bit of tension down there. Yeah, absolutely. You've been doing a bit of training with them, haven't you? Yeah, so I've done about, ooh, I reckon, about seven challenge training camps. And yeah. to me, the the training camps is probably what I look for in terms of what do I want to get out of the fight for challenge. It's more of the training um, you can't buy training with someone like Paul Firefield. Yeah. And to get to train under a, under a guy like him, it's, um, it's priceless. Yeah. Uh, so, so you've done seven camps. Yeah. I've done about seven camps. I've, uh, had four challenges, but obviously, uh, there's, there's always room because not everyone shows up. So there's always room to, um, you know, for a guy that's done it before to, to come yeah. in and, and train with the boys. Um, have but you been doing like the Saturday sparrings and everything as well? I don't, I don't spar. Um, you've got to be in a certain headspace to spar. I think. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's not me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Fair enough. So, but having said that, I do. Um, I immerse myself into the into the training as if I am fighting. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, definitely. But um, like the last week or two, I've I've been having sleepless nights, like thinking about the fights and I'm not even fighting. It's, it's, it's weird. I've been sort of um, playing, what's the word? Just playing the fight out of my head, which is something that you should so not do. You know? I think, I think you'd, you'd have to do that though. It, 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 it takes some like pretty special sort of mental strength. To yeah, no, as we, yeah, we'll get into it later um, about what to do, what not to do um, in terms of my experience and, I will sort of emphasize that it's only my experience. Everyone's different in how they prepare. Um, but, you know, there's a few little things. Um, I suppose as far as the boxing side of it, um, you know, I'm probably, when it comes to fighting, I'm probably still, I'm still a novice. Um, when it comes to getting in a ring in front of a crowd and then fighting as such. But so as far as the boxing side of it goes, this week, you know, put the gloves away, mm. in all honesty. Um, you know, Paul's done his job. Um, you should have the fitness level by now. They're down there now, just just going through some light work. Um, where I think, um, and I, I know my ability. I, I know you know I, I can you know I can punch and and do all that. But um, as old mate over there would tell you, you know, my life's very really extreme in the in the sense of my job, um, late nights, all that sort of stuff. So it's not conducive to. Um, to jumping the ring as well. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so you think right now, this week coming is more about the mental side of things? 100%. And yeah. for me, that's, I suppose, where I can um, be, um, if I can help anyone this week, um, I can tell you now, if you're not ready physically, um, you know, so if the question is, you know, what would you say to the guys fighting this week? It's a two-part answer. You know, if, if you're not ready uh, the first part is a the ones that aren't ready, that haven't done the work, and b the ones that are that have done the work. You know, if you haven't done the work, then all you can do is pray to God. <laughs> you don't, you know. And I mean, there's still a ways, a few ways to do it, but it's so much easier when you when you prepare properly, you know. And in my experience, um, I really, really get into it in the in the training side of it. Um, the last four challenges I've had. I've been lucky enough to be able to win because I've I've prepared. I, I I turn my life of extreme on a on a weekend. I turn it the other way, and you know it's all about for me. It's all about fitness. It's not just coming here. I um I do ice baths. I do you know altitude training, and I and I really love the fact that you're, you're training for a pro fight. Yeah, you know you're not fighting for a belt as such. It's it's no joke. But yeah, it, it is sanctioned sure. by the profession. Am I right? But it's sanctioned by the you know, the yeah. the official combat sports of Australia. Yeah. So you're a registered a registered pro fighter. So for me, I, I treat it like that, you know, and and I get I get kicks out of it, you know. Um, well, it's all about that, isn't it? It's about the experience of of being able to train like a pro fighter, being able to have a fight 
in front of a bunch of people like a pro fighter and I think that's like that's the a really massive part of the experience right, of that doing being the trained by challenge. one of the best ever trainers in Australia. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. Who doesn't basically he, he's not a PT here. So when these sorts of opportunities arise, um, you know, if, if it's something you want to do, um, just grab it, go, go into it, you know, and talking to the last week or two, it's, it's funny, you know, you talk to people and, um, and if there's one thing that I can offer in terms of, uh, sorry, it's a bit funny. No, you're right. I was actually waiting for stuff to pop up. <laughs> no. There's a, uh, the guy sitting over there has been able to pull a few pranks, but we've um, got Bash in the room with us. For those of you who don't watch the podcast, he sits in. Something's <laughs> going to pop out. <laughs> I've got a few stories, but um, yeah, look, at the end of the day, you know, it's it's 10 weeks of not only physical, because, you know, the last couple I've done, I've lost on average between six to eight to 10 kilos. Mm. Um, this training camp, not so well. I love my food, um, alcohol, and all that sort of stuff's no issue, but. Um, yeah, I reckon I've still got another one or two left in, in me, but if I was to do it, um, as in challenges or challenge trainings, um, nah, fights, yeah, I, I even I, I tossed around with the idea of, of the masters, but fights like that, fights like the challenge, as I said, it's not a, just about the training, it's about your whole life. You've got to put 10 weeks, eight to 10 weeks of your life on that's a whole. the thing, yeah, that's the thing that when I think about doing my next challenge, the biggest app- apprehension that I have is the level of commitment yeah. because I knew I went so hard last yeah. last time that, you know, that was my life for 10 weeks. And yeah. I've, I've reaped the benefits of it for sure. But it's like getting yourself into that headspace again to to go into yeah. something like that again is, is a And, and to be honest, uh, especially the last fight, I, I've been lucky enough to, to to win my fights. Not because, uh, and I'm by far, by, by far the best fighter at the gym. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's so much talent down there. And you yeah. can see it in this new crop too. Um, but for me, it, it's my ability to relax, yeah. um, which is a massive key. And we'll, we'll get into all the do's and the don'ts and stuff. Um, but especially my last fight where um, physically I, I prepared really well, but mentally, um, you know, a few little things business-wise were popping up um, and it took my focus away from what I should have been doing in terms of preparing for the fight. So, you know... Uh, only Dave, my trainer, knows this. That you know, I had a massive panic attack about a minute before I ran out. Not really, and it was just because um, I knew I just I didn't prepare mentally, and um, I think it, I, I truly believe I won the fight. But I would have been happy because it was a split. I would have been happy if if it went the other way because the volume of punches he threw were were quite extreme. But um, I thought I landed the cleaner blows. But yeah, there was a moment there where it was really what the hell am I doing here? You know, it was just. Um, full on yeah i definitely had that moment before my fight as well yeah yeah it probably well, maybe wasn't as extreme as what you were feeling but i definitely had that what am i doing what have i gotten myself into <laughs> yeah, that, 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 you know uh, just chatting with a few of the boys down there and i just the, the questions have been asked you know how, how are you feeling and i said look there's gonna be certain points of the night where the first one is um you wake up and you're not sure what to do with the day now. Just just to give a bit of context, when you say the boys down there, we're above the gym where all of the fight fit yeah. challenge challenge trainees are having one of their last sessions on yeah. a Monday before they fight on Friday. Yeah, so it's a bit of a bit of a shakedown, so a bit of shadow and all that. Um, so you know, t- tonight and this week, and I made a few notes because I knew basically the reason I'm here is basically just to, you know, if I can lend a few tips. Um, and the first and most important thing I think is. Uh, you've got to be really selfish. Um, and what I mean by that is um, you've got to be selfish with your time. What about you, week, you know, being a fighter, you know, the girl, the guy, whatever. Um, you know, you're going to get a lot of well wishes. You're going to get a lot of texts, SMSs. You know, everyone wants to jump on the bandwagon. The other thing that is, it's the tickets you've got to sell. And it's not just uh, fight for challenges. I think all pros, when they start out, they yeah. have to sell a certain amount of tickets. Yep. So it's not this, these challenges, and you don't you do not want to be handling tickets, yeah, you know, this week. So if you've got that special friend, that family member that you can pass that on to, collect money or whatever, you know, be selfish. Um, it's it's such a massive thing, you know. And I've tapped into just about every trainer at this gym for different things. Um, 
you know, Dave, my current trainer, you know, he just bashes me around when my hands are down. That's cool. You know, there, there's other trainers, but um, my strength, as I said, is my mind. Um, and Mark Mullins was the guy that taught me about um, mind training because that's, I think he's, he's pretty special at, um, you know, training of the mind. And he said, every little ounce of unnecessary things you do will cost you on the night. So sending text messages, you know, thanking people, don't worry about it. Wow, that's an interesting you know, way to think about it. Uh, it. It saps your energy. You know, you're not you're not going to a Tupperware party. You, you go. You're not hosting your party. So I laugh when I when I walk up and I see fighters that haven't fought before, haven't fought yet, and they're out in the crowd saying hi to their mates. You know, you don't see uh, Floyd Mayweather. You don't see him out in the crowd. You know, shaking hands, or you don't see any pro fighter out in, in the crowd because every handshake, every every conversation you have saps that little bit of energy out of you. I mean, you've ever hosted a party before and it, you know, after an hour you're stuffed. You, know, you, you can't, you, you think, I just want this to be over. Completely. So why would you go out there before you fight, you know? So I tend to just stay in the back. Um, and as I said, I'm selfish, you know, no one, no one gets my time except Dave, my trainer. Yeah. So, it's an interesting way to think about it. Um, I had a lot of mates come down as well. You might've heard the ruckus. On the first floor, they were all getting pretty rowdy. Was that when the beer was going? Yeah, there was beers flying (laughs) around. Yeah, that was my mates. Unfortunately, can't take them anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, I I, I found it quite like energizing to have my mates around. And Mm -hmm. I was hanging out with them beforehand as well. And But in saying that, my adrenaline kicked in probably too early, I'd say. Yeah. And when I was hanging out with my mates beforehand, they were all hyping me up. Everyone was revved up before it. We came in and then, you know, I was still loitering for a little while. And when I think back on it now, it's a good point you make that, you yeah. know, ha- had I have saved all of that energy that I gave to people, yeah, it wouldn't have, I w- it wouldn't have been as taxing on, on my, my own energy. Yeah, because, uh, you know, combat sports, it's different to, to other sports um, because there's another person at the other end wanting to hit you. Uh, it's... You know, whether it's MMA, whether it's boxing, you know, someone in that ring wants to hurt you. Um, it's not tennis where, you know, you hit the tennis ball back, you know, la di da And it's not team sports when you can tend to hide. You blame teammates. Yeah, you know, and for five minutes, you, if, you, if you're staffed, you can hide for that period. Once that adrenaline, and, you know, I learned this off my, my very first fight, I think it was, I'm talking amateurs, when um, I had no idea what was going on, but, the fact I did exactly what I just said not to do. You know, I was out the crowd and the bell went, my legs just went like lead. And I had no idea whether it was lactic acid or whatever, but I couldn't physically move my legs. I could punch, but I couldn't move. They were like massive bricks. And I had no idea. And to this day, I still had no idea what was going on. And all I could put it down to was adrenaline. And it just all just you know, went down. Adrenaline dump. Um, I mean, that's what they call it. So, you know, conserve your energy. Um, the funny thing about these nights as well, they tend to go a little bit later in the night. So you've really got to, and you can start it from tonight, you've really got to think about your sleeping pattern because if you're going to fight at 8 o'clock at night, 9 o'clock at night, it's usually when people are getting ready for bed, I suppose, maybe not on a Friday night. But your energy levels are at its peak, I'd say, mid-afternoon, 4 or 5. So if you're up at 6, 7, and you're peaking at 4 or 5, come eight or nine, you're going to be pretty screwed. You're going to be pretty screwed. So what I tend to do, and again, this is my, what I do. It's, you know, everyone's different. As Paul said, you know, it's, uh, you do what you don't change anything drastically this week, but I'll, I'll tend to sort of have late nights starting tonight in terms of I'll go to bed later and wake up later. So come Friday, my sleeping pattern is I'll have a sleep in and, and basically you know, when it's time to fight at say nine o'clock, I'm not going to be ready for bed. I'm going to be ready to fight. Um, again, that's just another thing I do. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it seems to work for me. Um, well, it does make sense. And I think that um, there's, that's done quite widely in many sports as well. When, mm. when the sports are later at night, but and when like boxing yeah. fights are later at night, a lot of athletes tend to do that yeah. same thing where they get them, where they, they train at that time as well. Yeah. They train a bit later. Yeah. And I think that's maybe part of the reason why we even train at seven o'clock here, why they start at seven o'clock. There you go. Um, you know, and these are some of the little things that these guys down there might not have thought about, you know, because I remember the first challenge I did, I woke up 
and I had no idea what I was going to do, what to eat. Um, diet's something I won't touch because each to their own, you know. I had no idea what to do when I woke up. I went shopping. It was, <laughs> you know, just walking around in a daze. It's a funny old day, isn't it? Because you're just waiting around. You're to... waiting around. Um, you're reflecting. Um, Playing and... the scenario out 50 million times. Yeah, and, and look, as Paul said last week again, if you're not nervous, then you probably should be nervous about not being nervous, if that makes any sense. Um Everyone's nervous. My, my nerves actually, each fight I've had got worse and worse. You know, it's it's funny game because every situation and period of your life is different. So the only thing I can say, if you are nervous, that's that's meant to happen. But embrace the nerves. You know, let it in. Just don't don't fight it. Don't go. Why am I nervous? You know, why am I doing this? Am, am I doing the right thing? I'm going to get bashed. Or, if you're nervous, that's good. Um, just embrace it and just you know just. Let it in and, and just say to yourself, Friday night's my night. You know, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to... Um, and to be honest, you know, what's the statistic for how many people in a... Less than 1% of people in the Australian population have the courage to step into the ring. So repeat that. Less than 1% of Australians have the courage to jump in the ring. So the people there... The as as, as a professional. So the 1,500 or so there on Friday night are there to watch you knowing that they won't have the balls, a lot of them, to jump in. So you're not, you've got no one to impress but yourself, you know. You, you, you've, you've done the hard eight weeks. Um, and the idea here is to just, you know, I always say when you're sparring, it's the same, it's the same theory, you know. You're fighting someone, he's punching back. Admittedly, you're not going as hard, but you put a 1,000 people around you, all of a sudden, things change. Why yeah. do they change? They shouldn't. Why do you need to give us stuff what people out there are thinking? You know. Well, I, mean? I guess it's just the it's just the pressure, isn't it? You know that all eyes are on you. It's the pressure and, you're putting on yourself, though. Yeah. You know? But but it, it takes experience, though, to be able to sort of, you know, um, limit the effect that has on your yeah. uh, on on your actions when you yeah. get in the ring. Yeah, you can't stop it, but you can control it to a point. Um, I'll never forget the first punch I copped. Um, and this is another thing that these guys um, won't know until it happens, especially the first time. There's a few few guys that have done it before. But copping that first punch in the ring on the night is a surreal experience. You know, <clears throat> for me, it was, it was, I went zing, like, you know, I saw Coyote Bird and, Tweety and I saw stars and I thought oh, I'm 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 gone. Did you actually? I, 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 I seriously I started like, what the hell was that? I mean, Paul was a pretty hard puncher, you know, and and I had to be really weary of him um, as such. But after two seconds, instinct, eight weeks of training with Paul, it all kicked in, you know. Grabbed him, held him for as long as the ref would allow, five seconds or whatever. Got my bearings back and just thought, all right, I better get the hell out of here. Switch and, on. And just um, and. F- and box rather than fight, you know. So, for me, my my fights, my last three fights, they haven't really been. Um, uh, I haven't really um, been happy with them in the way that I'd like to fight. Um, but I've just basically just boxed, you know, especially after feeling you know, your opponent's power. I just basically it's, it's a points driven game, you know. If you go out there to try to knock someone out, you're probably going to get the you know people mm. getting hurt. Totally, totally. I, I think that um, it's it's so important as well with the with the mentality thing. The the one the, the ones that I've seen where the fighters have done the best has definitely been when people have been able to be calm and not go out there and and fight as you said, but box. Yeah. Try and implement the things that you've learned yeah. over and, these and eight weeks. And you can tell the ones in the back room, you know, the ones that are like really tense. Mm. You just know all they want to do is get out there and unleash, and it never works. Yeah, after forty five seconds to a minute it becomes a wild rodeo where arms are getting waved everywhere and it's it's not a really good spectacle. So, you know, for me, it's it's more six minutes is a long time, two minutes is a long time. So, you know, I, I pace myself. I've got no issues losing, say, round one or losing part of it, you know, working my way into it. Um, but in terms of, uh, you know, boxing, um, if I was to do another one, it'll be, you know, I'd like to – prove what I can do because I don't think I have the last couple because of my my cardio ability. 
Um, let's just say I don't have the best tank going around. Um, and again, it's all about putting your life on hold for eight weeks, you know, um, turning up to Eric's sprints. I don't know if you've ever been on those sprints. On no, Sunday I never mornings. went. But yeah, I was throwing up there, you know, quite easily for those sprints. Yeah, you know, swimming and, and just... How doing... long do they go for, Eric's sprints? What do you do? Oh, look, about an hour? Yeah, they go for an hour. Yeah. Hour. But they're brutal, they're, you know. And not being the, the fittest guy in the world, you feel like a bit of a dick when, when you're all when hanging out with the last people, you know. Walk, walk, walk at least around. you were there. <laughs> at least I turned up at seven in the morning. I, don't know, I can't imagine, what, a, I, I, can't imagine what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> came, straight from, <laughs> came straight from 161. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, sleep patterns, you know, what else have I got here? Don't mingle. <clears throat> um, conserve your energy. Um you know, and the other little trick that I do, um, this probably won't work for everyone. Um, there's certain things that I do, will we'll do this week because not everyone can grasp the concept of what two minutes is, three minutes. So I'll do everything in two or three minute bursts where, you know, and it doesn't have to be just boxing. You know, I'll go for a swim. I'll swim for three minutes and I'll stop and I'll wait 90 seconds and I'll mentally get prepared for for three minute rounds, um, you know, I'll, I'll, whatever exercise I do, whatever, anything I do for this week, I'll try and do in three minute bursts. Cause it'll give me the concept of what a round, how long a round is, mm. if that makes any sense. Absolutely. So yeah, you, you're, you're, really, rounds. you're really focusing on conditioning yourself for the night. Conditioning my mind. For yeah. The, um, conditioning yourself for the time, conditioning yourself yep. for the, the amount of minutes to a round and that yep. sort of. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, I say three minutes because the rounds only go for two. Yeah. So if your mind's conditioned for three, when that when that bell goes for the end of the round, you're thinking, shit, I've still got all my energy, you know. Mm. So that's the way I do it. Um, yeah. And and little things, you know, little things like that will, will get you through. And before you know it, it's over. You know, it's... Um, yeah, it goes pretty quick. There's going to be so much... I don't know what's the word anxiety down there yeah. or everything just builds up, builds up, builds tension, up pressure. And then you get into, you get into the ring and then I, I don't know, my personal experience was that all went away. As soon as I got in the ring, I felt like this massive pressure 10 minutes before when they were wrapping up my hands. And then I got out there and like, there was like cameras and felt like cameras were flashing. Maybe, yeah. maybe they weren't, but this is what it felt like. And like, I was walking out to the ring, got in the ring. I heard my mates all cheering and then I was kind of like moving about and I was like, yeah. all right, cool. This is what I'm, this is what I'm here for. Yeah. And then after that, I really switched on. I really calmed yeah. down and I was able to keep a really cool head for that fight. So. Cause you've done the work uh, during the eight weeks. And, and one thing I will say about fight fit um, is you're very evenly matched. Um, there's a lot of care taken um, so if these guys want to do it because they have a couple every year, you're not going to get matched with someone that's way over your, you know, no. way over your weight class. Paul watches everybody very closely. He knows this, knows their skills. He, he matches people up at sparring yeah. and it's just, that's just not I mean, something that's in events, They've had what, two, two knockouts? Yeah, for two knockouts. Yeah. Two knockouts, but we've yeah. never had anyone seriously. Yeah. And, and and seriously, you know, once someone gets a flurry on or whatever, you know, the ref steps in. So whilst it, it is a sanctioned fight by the pro body, uh, it's very well, you know, uh, taken care of in terms of um, making sure your safety is the safety, utmost priority. I'm not going to sort of, don't be naive to think you can't get hurt, um, you know, Last last fight, I copped a blood nose, and I thought my nose was broken, and I and it shocked me. I thought the cheek of this little, yeah. you know, it all like <laughs> wow, and it hurt, and it was just like wow, it's it's on, yeah. You know? So you it, never it, feel so alive though. It's not a spelling contest, but not there for a haircut, know, that's for yeah. sure. Especially you, but <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm sponsored by Fight Fit. <laughs> um, so yeah, look, it, it's you know this week is all about you. If you're fighting, good luck. It, it really is a selfish sport. It's an individual sport in terms of your mates aren't going out there to help you, you know. It's not a nightclub where you got your little little buddies to back you up. Yeah. yeah it's just you and him and, and spend a lot of time on your own this week in your head. You know, yeah. Go for long walks. Me and Bash go for long walks on the beach all the time. Holding hands. Holding hands. <laughs> So what's been your favorite fight and why? 
I'd have to say the first, only because was that when the, you were when you were amateurs? Oh no 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 no. So Fight Fit amateurs challenges. was really shits and giggles for me because I was yeah. I was in my twenties, oh, not in my teens, really. Um, for me, boxing's always been in my life, um, but I, I was playing football at the time, um, and I love my footy. So what position are you? Me on yeah. the bench now. I was <laughs> uh, I was just forward forward changing on the ball. Um, nice. Yeah, but um, it was basically training during the week and football on the weekends. And if you wanted to fight, fight it was fight Friday nights. Um, so it got to a point where I couldn't fight Friday night and then play Saturday. So, you know, I chose footy, but always kept training with, you know, in the boxing side of it. Um, but my favourite, m- most enjoyable fight was the first challenge I did. Um, you know, I would have I would have beaten King Kong that day. I, I just was not going to lose. Really? You were just you feeling? Know, I, was, I was feeling, I've, I've dropped... 10 kilos. Yeah, one of my other good mates, Tam, was was also fighting. It was a big thrill. That's probably the reason I got into the challenge was uh, an agreement I had with him. Um, but it was a really, yeah, we have did this together. Um, so he, sorry. How did you come to that agreement? We were just out one night and um, Tam had just joined the, joined the gym. And um, it was good to see, you know, because I'd been a part of Fight Fit uh, since, is it Joey? Since... Yes, it's so yeah, so so you know when Fight Fit took over, I just started with um, with Bash at the same time. So I'd been there a while, and then seeing a guy like Tam, you know, from from my industry, um, walk in with his girlfriend, it was like, oh, this is cool. And then it wouldn't have been not even a month later, or it was 2000, a couple of a couple of months later, whatever. We were at, at this club, and we'd had a few drinks, and we were. He just said, "I'm fighting," and I just was like, "Bullshit." He said, no, no, I'm fighting. And, and I just laughed and I said, mate, you're not fighting. I said, if you're fighting, I'm fighting. As, you know, as a, you're not doing it. And I got I got to the gym Monday and uh, whole mate over there goes, oh, did you hear Tam was fighting? Oh, you had to do it. <laughs> but you know what? I've always, since the amateurs, since that period when I had my legs went to, went to lead in the amateur days, I've always had the itch to have that one more fight because I really wanted to, yeah, scrub that out of my head about what happened in that amateur fight. So yeah, I, I agreed to the fight, signed up. We both we both signed up and yeah, lost lost ten kilos. Um, put it all back on five days later. But, as you do, as yep. you do. Um, and that's the other thing too. You know, uh, these guys have trained so hard for eight weeks, maintaining it. Yeah, you, know, you, you think you're going to have a, a week off, whatever. But you know, try to come in as much as you can, even if it's just to be around around the you know around the gym absolutely because you can go back to just being your, your normal I, I i completely agree i mean you, you go to this massive extreme for eight ten weeks yep. and you're eating the right things you're probably hopefully staying off the piss and you know, <laughs> doing all, all, all of the good the good stuff the right stuff and then once it's over you some like you get like i got the notion that like i was gonna you know i was fine i was sweet i was feeling fit feeling yeah. good but then i started you know i went out and got, went drinking and started eating bad foods for the next week and felt great about it but then i just stacked it on again you jump on those little. scales and the, just, yeah the numbers keep rising yeah, yeah yeah definitely and then i had to really rein it in a few months later um and now i reckon i'll probably do the next challenge yeah in december yeah. because um i feel like i need that again like I, yeah. I like i feel like my my body and my mind is crying out for something yeah. to really um to really put my attention yeah. on, focus on. And, and, and going back to your question of what was my best fight, and this is probably a, a lot about when you ask AFL footballers or whatever, what's your best match? The first is probably always the best. And I'll t- I tell you why, the toughest decision to, to, to make with these challenges is actually deciding you're going to do it. Once you decide you're going to do it and you just give yourself to Paul Fifield and you just give in and just let him take take over your life for eight weeks, he'll prepare you and he'll turn you into a beast. That's a really good way to put you it. Know? That's a really good so way to put it. The toughest deci- the toughest thing for me was deciding, okay, I'm going to do it. Once I decided I'm going to do it. Don't resist. Don't resist <laughs> yeah. the burpees because lots of burpees. <clears throat> yep. Listen to what this guy says. And I mean, you know, no one, no one notices, but whenever he talks, I'm, I, I try to be near the front because he's, he's, he doesn't speak loudest. Um, but I hang on every word that guy says, you know, um, yeah, I was brought up when I my old coach, the coach that I started with back in the day, Stan Bogovic. Um, yeah, he taught me a different style um, to what basically I learned here. 
um, because he was a he, he fought like with a shoulder roll. Um, if, if you know how, how Mayweather sort of fights. And, yeah, the, you know, the, the Philly shell guard. Yeah, so that's all good and well. So when I came here, that's how I was comfortable with because Stan was the type of guy that never wanted his fighters getting hurt because we were just kids back in, you know, 16, 17. And our, his, our safety was his main concern. So the shoulder roll is, is very defensive in terms of, you know, it's, you're very hard to hit. And, you know, if that's my strongest point. Is I'm, I'm, I'm pretty hard to hit. But as soon as I got here and Paul noticed that style, he said, you're going to have to learn orthodox because you'll have no right hand. And so basically, I still don't have a right hand, but uh, sometimes I get mixed. You know, I'm learning the orthodox style because... You, I thought that was one of your strongest punches, uh, your counter right oh. when I've spied you. <laughs> and I yeah. throw at you and then you throw that counter right. Uh, that was a good punch. Yeah, no, I, I just try and hope to hopefully stare at people down and that's my strongest <laughs> point but um you know so yeah it, for the last four years it, it's been me um changing my styles away and you know and paul also, you know you have to be a really good good fighter to to be able to pull off the shoulder roll sort of technique um and as i said to you earlier on you know i'm, I'm still in the novice stage in terms of how many fights i've had and all that sort of stuff um but yeah the the toughest part is deciding giving yourself to Paul for the eight weeks. And then this week's all about enjoying it. And that first fight, um, yeah, I, I went, I let loose. And um, I don't know, I forget um, what his name was, but, you know, um, speaking to him after the fight, he reckons he was about you know, five seconds away from just, you know, because I, I landed some really good ones, you know, and um, I'd watch that one over and over again. But, mm. you know, it's, uh, it's funny how you watch the good ones, but you don't want to know about the, the ones you're not. Yeah, you're not happy with. But, yeah, but you've had a win as well. So yeah, yeah, it's a. Yeah. I, I mean, my my mates absolutely hound me about it all the time that I'm always getting the fight up on YouTube. And <laughs> <laughs> you probably are. Yeah, what I do. How many fights have you won? Bash, Bash has had five Where's... fights, won two, and lost three. And I've. Oh, and the, what about your brother? <laughs> he, he, he put in didn't you fight your brother though? Yeah. Might have to get bash a microphone because no one's gonna be able to hear what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You write it, write it in the comments, bash. So you are, you will do another. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think I'll probably do the next one. Yeah. Uh, now that I've set it live on here. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> hey, I'll, 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 I'll with you. Yeah. But no, look, I can't recommend it. I, I can't I, recommend it highly enough to, to be honest in terms of um, what it does uh, for your life. Um, <clears throat> I actually remember before I did it, I, when I was about to sign up for it, I would talk to you in the change rooms downstairs. Yeah. Um, we'll and, and, yeah, we were both naked, <laughs> <laughs> as you do in the male change rooms. No one wants to know what yeah. goes on there. <laughs> and um, you, and you, I remember you saying to me, oh, just do it, man. It'll change your life. Yeah. And that, that actually stuck with me a lot yeah. because you'd done a few. And I remember you saying that. I was like, well, I don't see how it wouldn't change yeah, your life. And, you know, look, this is a, it's a very touchy subject these days. Um, and, you know, I don't want to... I what the males to... in the change rooms, or you know, for, for, as far as mental health goes, um, I find individual sports uh, are better than um, better than team sports um, because at the moment, if you look at statistics, you know, all the headlines, all the all the articles in the papers about people uh, going through mental issues are all involved in team sports. Sure, there's one or two that are that are um, you know have issues and again it's a very touchy subject um but boxing mma uh individual sports like golf you'll rarely hear of a, a person going through you know i mean there'll, there'll be the odd person here and there but compared to team sports um you know because uh because it's a very lonely existence i mean when you when you're boxing when you're playing golf, when you, you know, and you've got to learn how to deal. You've got to, to learn deal how to deal with, with demons your in your head. And when you jump in the ring, that's when you beat those demons. You know, it's it's, it's weird. And I, I've had it ten years ago. Went through eighteen months of it, and it scares the shit out of you because you don't know how to combat it. As in you mental know? health issues. In, yeah, just yeah, you know, a little anxiety here and there. And I'm not going to insult you know the, the 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 mental illness by saying you know I know all about it and all that stuff. But what I do know is. Um, when you do a combat sport like boxing and stuff like that, it teaches you how to be alone and how to be in the moment alone. And 
there's no better place to be alone and learning how to overcome it than on Friday night when these guys jump in the ring and yep. and and just you know they'll come out of it. No one will get hurt in terms of seriously, you know, because ten years of fights prove that you know statistics don't lie. Um, and they'll come out of it and say it's the best thing they've ever done. Really, so. I, I often say that I think that people who do martial arts, especially at a high level, yeah. are the most mentally strong people that, yeah. that I know. Yeah. For sure. It's, it's individual sports as opposed to team sport where you feel like you're letting your teammates down. You know, if you, if you feel like you're letting 20 people, 20 people down, there's some things going on behind the yeah. scenes here. That... We said Paul Firefield walk in. <laughs> the master's arrived. Paul Firefield, the uh, star of the second half of this show, yeah. is coming in. He's actually going to tell you what to do, what the, the right way to do it. Uh, I've just babbled on here for the last half hour. Exactly. Um, but, yeah, I, I find um, individual sports to be a lot more beneficial for, for mental, for people, you know, people with anxiety and stuff because it's, uh, you know, you, you need to learn to be alone and you need to learn to love yourself and you need to – yeah, you know, you're jumping in that ring alone. That's the that's the bottom line. Yeah, you know? and I there's urge not anyone to, to, to come and have a look on Friday. And and you know, there's a lot of people that have fought because they've come to a previous fight. So if you're curious, even a little bit curious, yeah. just come and have a look. I was just speaking to two of the boys downstairs, and they came to the previous one, and that's what made them and a few of their mates do exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, I'm going to let the experts take over. I think there's a there's a link on to tickets on the Facebook page. Is it? In the chats right now, Bash is going to put some links to the tickets as well. So cool, mate. Ba Brad, thank you so much for your oh, words of wisdom, mate. No next, time, next time we'll have to do was, uh... a segment just about your uh, DJ career as well. Oh no! And all your Thailand <laughs> tours, DJ Brad Sasman. There's some stories. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there the was most, a stitch up coming along. Anyway, thank you, mate. Thank you, mate. Good on you. All right. So, guys, second half of the podcast now. We've got the great man Paul Fifield on. Coach, trainer, how are you, Paul? I'm good, Jake. And yourself? Yeah, very well, thank you. My how... voice, my voice is gone, mate, because I was just yelling at the uh, challenges. They need to this. be yelled at. So <laughs> they love it. They need to be kept in line. Yeah. Well, so I did you lose your voice just now? <clears throat> yeah, I was just trying to hype them up just just a few days before their fight. So how do you go about that? Yell at them. I love it. <laughs> just scream, just scream at them. No, actually, can't... look, they're looking very, very sharp. Which is the idea? The last week we we don't train very long, you know, hour and a half sessions have cut down to forty five minutes or thereabouts, and just short sharp stuff so that they feel ready to go. They walk out of the door feeling like they should do more, <clears throat> but it's the last thing you want to do in the last couple of days before a fight. You want to have be re totally recovered. Yeah, I, I I wanted to. I was raring to go in that last week because I kind of felt like I was peaking. I think maybe on the Wednesday or so, and I really wanted to get in and have a good session but i felt like you know just relax my fitness is hopefully already going to be there but yeah as i say to the guys i said you're not going to get fitter in the last week but you are going to get less fatigued so therefore your performance will increase performance equals fitness minus fatigue and so you don't get fitter you get less fatigued in that last week if you train really hard in that last week you don't get less fatigued and then for your performance will suffer because of that mm. so but you, well, you wouldn't recommend people just sitting around on a couch and watching netflix for the whole week would you oh, i remember, <clears throat> remember my um, boxing trainer johnny biscuzzi liked us to do nothing for a week it drove you mad and <clears throat> people aren't robots they need to feel like they're doing something because their emotions play a big part too so i say get out there and do something but make sure it's light mm. don't introduce things that are new you know i've had one guy come in oh look i I felt I was a bit underdone, so I went and did 10 miles last night. I said, that's pretty smart because you're fighting six minutes. You know, you just, <laughs> <laughs> you've just ran for 50. You know, yeah. It's probably not necessary. So short, sharp stuff so that you feel like you're doing not doing nothing. Mm. Yeah, I mean, having that mentality where you think you're underdone can be, can be dangerous as well. You want to feel like you've given it your all in the, in the whole eight weeks leading up. Yeah. And then so it, it really, really is the trainer's biggest hurdle for a lot of people is getting them to back their training off. Yeah. You know, and especially for novices who feel like you've got to train right up to the fight. And so mm. this week in the challenge training, we've, we're have we backing it right off and I'm telling people, telling all their PTs, et cetera, hey, just take it easy on them. Just work on strategies, work on your technique a little bit and just get 
you know, little nooks and crannies in it. They're not nooks and crannies, they're little cobwebs out of your system if you sit around doing nothing, as you suggested, eating and pizza. They're, you know? they're obviously not going to, you know, you're not going to want to, as you said, change their style now as well, teach them new things as well. So I guess they'd just be maybe honing in on, on what yeah, they already yeah, know. Yeah, nothing new now. Yeah. Nothing new. You know? where, where are you at as, as, a, as the coach of this at this time in the week? Are you nervous or? And, uh, I'm excited because you see such a change, such a change, especially over the last three weeks here from people who, you know, <clears throat> you look at and go, are they going to be able to fight in three weeks? You know, all of a sudden they produce. If if you would have watched them downstairs before, you would have said, "Oh yeah, look at these guys." You know, and that's right; they're ready to go now. And it's it's well, so I'm excited. I don't get nervous. I'm I'm stepping in the ring now. I get excited. You know, mm. and and there's some fights there. Actually, a lot of the fights there who that I've sort of matched up in my head. I know who's going to fight who, and I don't know who's going to win. And I've been around for a long time. Like there was a couple of girls fighting, um, and you know, a couple of, oh, not fighting. They were their training and they sparred a couple of weeks ago. One of them had it all over the other one. And I thought, well, that's a change. And the following week, then they sparred again. The other one had it all over the other one. Mm. So I've got no idea who's going to win that fight. Yeah. So I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. And it's a pretty, pretty decent crop of guys this, um, this time around as well. I was sparring a few of them too. And especially the big boys, there's some big, we have got a few, there's big some blokes. big boys in there too. Yeah, and they hit hard blokes, as well. And yeah, some yeah, Billy's sitting in 128 kilo. Oh, actually, no, he's lost a bit of weight. Oh, he's 125 now. He's a big fella. <laughs> yeah. And he moves well, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He, he can very punch well. too. It must yeah. be pretty rewarding for you to see sort of the progression of how far people come. Oh, it is. That's why I said last time I spoke to you that <clears throat> this is my gig. Yeah, I'm not letting anyone take over it yet because yeah. I, I get a lot of enjoyment out of that, and especially out of seeing people, oh, just grow so so much as yeah. boxers, you know. And even and, the doubt that you'd maybe have for someone, oh, maybe this is their flaw, to see someone burst through that and overcome. It oh, you awesome. see it every time. You see it, and not in one person, in the, everybody, in everybody, you know. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of nerves out there now, <clears throat> which is perfectly normal. What do you see in terms of nerves? I'm curious to know, like, what kind of body language signals you read. <laughs> quieter mm. most people are quieter much more quiet than usual some people hide their nervousness by being louder mm. and more extrovert but <clears throat> you can see that it's just a they're a little bit scared and so they're just trying to deal with it in some way and how do you how would you go about easing their minds you can't <clears throat> you can't the, the, only, the only way I, all i say is your opponent's nervous too mate he's going through exactly the same thing and one of my favourite sayings is being nervous, excited nervous, is better than sitting there watching TV and doing nothing. Mm. You know, you're alive when you're excited or when you're nervous, you know you're alive. Yeah. You know, and just before you step into a boxing ring, oh, gee, you're alive. You might not, you might wish you weren't there, but afterwards you think, oh, mate, how good was that? Bash was telling me hilarious stories uh, last week when him, Brad, and I were out for dinner with Maddie Robinson, who was on the podcast last week, um, about when he when you roped in into doing his first fights and then just before you were like you just realized what you've gotten yourself into haven't you yeah, and he was true. like yeah and you're like feels great doesn't it <laughs> you feel alive don't you well, that's Bash used to love it he used to love the bus trip we used to hire a bus because it'd be a big group of us go down to all these fights and he's he used to really love that part of of the fight you know the in the change rooms beforehand when everyone comes in you know wishing him good luck and good luck and good luck and then he just get out there and he just loved the whole thing. It's yeah. actually funny seeing a Price Waterhouse Cooper accountant <laughs> enjoy that. You know? Yeah. Yeah, because I mean going from working at I can't remember Price Waterhouse or PWC. PWC. Yeah. Um to then doing professional boxing is just such a radical change for somebody. On his first fight, a busload of PWC accountants <laughs> Rocked up to the fights out in the eastern suburbs somewhere. Knox, you know, I think. All the girls with tattoos all over them. Yeah. You know, guys with silver teeth and tattoos on their face. Yeah. And they're going, oh, what have we got ourselves into? You know, they, they love have it. a little they cordoned off talk. section. <laughs> <laughs> Accountant no, section. they were right in the middle of it, mate. They yeah. loved it. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. It was good. Yeah. So we've got the challenge coming up on Friday, and I'm very, very excited about that. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's so good to see people go from nothing to that. To walk out and mm. fight, uh, I'll tell you a couple of stories. I mean, one of my favourite stories is is Vinny. I don't know if I spoke about that story before too, but Vinny was this uh, little Italian, little um, taxi driver. Yeah. 
little Indian taxi driver who walked into the gym and said, I want to fight. Oh, yeah, what sport you done before? Nothing. Nothing. Not even table tennis, you know, and everyone wanted to fight him. Remember, everyone wanted to fight him because, oh, I could beat this bloke. I could beat yeah. this bloke. About three weeks out from the fight, he sort of had enough of getting beaten up in sparring and started hitting people back. Mm. He won by knockout. Won by knockout. Unbelievable. Yeah. So it's just someone that not only when he walked in the gym, he had no no experience, but everyone else was riding him off as well. Yeah. Oh, bloody earth. And it was it a pen, was it a penny drop type moment where he started yeah. hitting people? Yes, it was. He just back. had enough. He'd had enough of getting I'm not copping this anymore. You know? yeah. And you see that time and time again. And it was fantastic to see. And yeah, and, I, I can I can completely actually empathize with that because I remember when I was living in London doing boxing over there in, in Hackney in East London, um, my my coach would put me up because it was kind of like a sort of a one-on-one type thing with my coach and I, but then he'd put me up against other boys that he was training as well and I was sparring them and for the first maybe 10 times that I sparred, I was always really nervous to hit the other guy because I was nervous about that he was just going to unload on me because they were all, always better boxers than me. And it wasn't until I don't think I got here and started sparring here that i got out there and just i think i was actually talking to troy one of your trainers and he said to me mate sometimes you've just got to get out there and just punch on (laughs) and that and that resonated with me a lot and then i got out there and i just started throwing my hands started not hesitating as much and it became a lot more enjoyable rather than like a nervous experience of sparring and and troy's totally right 100 percent right sometimes you just got to punch on and and don't care about being hit and you go, oh, that was all right. Mm. And I'll tell you a story about a girl. She was having her first fight and on the challenge. And her first spa, she stepped out after just one round. And I said, just, just have one round and come out. I said, how was that? And she goes, that was horrible. And she started to cry. Four weeks later, at the end of the fight, she had her hands in the air, bald fists going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A total turnaround because she just went, okay, I've got to punch on sometimes. And she had blood coming out of her face at the same time as yelling at, yeah, yeah. That's from crying one month earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So, so she must right. have been feeling yeah. alive. <laughs> oh, she was alive. She was alive and she loved it from that's yeah. horrible to how good is this? Yeah. yeah. Is there any other particular stories that stick out in your mind about people who maybe have had like a particularly big turnaround in the, in the challenge? No specific occasion because it happens all the time. It's mm. happening this time. Yeah. It's happening this time. People are just so scared and so nervous and think that they're not going to be good enough and such a negative attitude. And I just talk to them about you have to be positive. You have to be positive. Mm. How do you find the best ways to go about that, to go about, as I said before, easing easing their minds? Do you, do you take each sort of person individually? And- of course you do. Of course you do. But one of the one of the biggest ways is do you want to lose this? No, that's what I'm nervous about. Oh, that's good. Mm. means you're taking it seriously because you're nervous. Is it comparable to your experiences with all of the pro fighters that you've trained? Totally. Totally. These people who do the Fight Fit Challenge are very driven people, just the way the pros are. They're very driven. Everyone's Mm. all, I mean, they're all looking to just get better and self-improve. Yeah, and And it's very, you know what's nervous is you you don't want to make a, why people are nervous is they don't want to make a fool of themselves. No one wants to get bashed in front of their mates. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. And it's funny about that. That's what I like about the challenge. A lot of a lot of the mates come along to watch their mate get beat up. They just can't wait. And as soon as their mate starts to cop it a little bit, all of a sudden their friendship throws through and all of a sudden they're barracking for their friend mm. instead of hoping he gets a, gets cracked in the head. It's, yeah. I see that all the time. It's funny. And it happens right with you, you too. Yeah. They all want to see you get beaten up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's they why were, they were there. They were beating each other up up there. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to see Jake get smashed. Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as you cop, a couple, you cop a couple, all of a sudden, the crowd changes. You yeah, know? definitely. I mean, having their support was one of the one of the coolest things I've ever had to hear them all up there. And as soon as I I got in the ring and I started started fighting, I felt like I was moving moving so smoothly, and I felt like I was really showing off my skills to my friends. And it was it was just such a good. And then feeling. you saw the video and realized yeah. how delusional you were. Yeah, <laughs> I still bring out the video every day. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I was doing fine. <laughs> Yeah, the fire pit challenge is set up in a way where, because no one's going to come and watch you watch you fight except your mates, mm. so it's set up where it's standing room around the ring. And what ha- what tends to happen is, if Jake's fighting, 
all Jake's mates will come to round, sit around, stand around ringside and then you hear them. And they tend to back off into the crowd when you've gone to talk to you or whatever at the backstage or whatever. And whoever's fighting next, their mates come up. So it's a really great atmosphere. Do you remember Johnny Denson's mates? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was standing amongst them because I know a few of those boys. You're, Johnny one, of, you're I, one of Johnny Benson's mates. Mate, mate. so yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Johnny's mates were just uh, absolutely crazy just in, in the corner where, where Johnny was they were all just absolutely screaming their heads off they were worse than my mates but except they, they didn't break any glass <laughs> they didn't yeah. break any chandeliers <laughs> yeah it's a great atmosphere the fight fit challenge you know great atmosphere do you find yourself when because you did the commentating do you find yourself wanting to you know coach and wanting to yell out oh, for sure to, to people yes all the time all yeah the time. i know I, you love I, to talk and i do it through the mic sometimes yeah. you know yeah. i've heard that yeah. what are you doing with him oh sorry yeah. i can't do that i'm on the mic yeah, yeah. and i know you, you love to talk when you're coaching as well because i was watching um sam greco's fights from k1 when i was just bored in bed the other day and um i could hear you at one point yelling out hey sam you having fun i'm having fun you enjoying yourself <laughs> and sam kind of looked over <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Not very much. laughs> why do you say things like that <laughs> oh, no. i remember one day sammy was fighting this bloke it was an eight-man competition and he dropped the bloke really hard and the bloke was in my corner and i remember looking at the bloke i said mate you can get up and he looks at me and he actually gets up because I've told him that he could get up. And Sam knocked him down again another time. I said, come on, mate. There's more in your lit. There's more. In your... He got back up. At the end of the round, Sam, he goes, stop telling that bloke to get up, mate. For fuck's sake, you know. <laughs> he's just... <laughs> oh, so... And he got back up. But, you know, Sam beat him anyway. But it was... I had a good time. Is there I enjoyed a... <laughs> Is there a method? Is there a method to the madness though, or is it just no, no, you just, just say whatever's fun. on your yeah, mind? Yeah, whatever's on my mind. Yeah. Yeah, I found that so funny when I was listening. I could hear Sam, you having fun, mate? I'm, I'm having fun. I was like, it sounds like you genuinely are having a lot of fun. Oh, one time, <laughs> Eddie Delic was fighting for the Australian title. Eddie psychedelic, actually, but, uh, he was fighting for the Australian. Psychedelic. And um, the the uh, Channel Seven or whatever channel was filming would come along and stick the microphone right in their mouth as you talking to it and i said oh look if i start talking about something weird dude he just ignore it you know and the bloke comes with the microphone as i'm talking and i said remember that phone call you got from that girl the other day he goes oh yeah there. we started chatting about some phone call that he got the other day <laughs> and apparently someone was watching it and they said oh, oh that must have been dubbed from earlier on we sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> we just started chatting about some phone call he had oh, no, we just have a bit of fun eddie we're, psychedelic is yeah. such a good name though. <laughs> yeah that's a great name yeah, we're there to have fun and these people who do the fight for challenge are there mm. to have fun otherwise you wouldn't be doing it would you? yeah it's hard to enjoy yourself though um i find on the night if you have one that's later if you have one of the yeah. fights that's later because you're just like waiting around would you suggest getting there later if you're doing that uh, everyone's different. Mm. Some people feed off the atmosphere, but that can be very draining because of the adrenaline. Yeah, well, I was just talking to Brad, and Brad was saying that he loves to just stay backstage for the whole time until his fight comes. He doesn't like to, you know, drain himself by speaking to people and being amongst the crowd. What would you suggest in terms of like what to do on the night before your fight? I would tend to say, um, if you feel like being with people. Be with people. If you feel like being on your own, be alone. So you have to have to go. Everybody's different. I know some people who'd go there if they were the main event. Go there early and watch the entire fight. Like they'd sit down and watch the fights like a spectator. I've had other people who get there as late as they possibly can. Eddie Delic's brother, Dean Delic, <laughs> Dean psychedelic. Yeah, <laughs> Dean Delic. I remember one day we rocked up to the fights thinking they started at eight o'clock. They started at six thirty, and we walked in. The promoter says, "Where have you been? You're on next." So we wrapped him up and didn't even warm up, just straight out there. It's the best he ever fought. Really? He said, can we organise this every time? I said, I don't know if we could bet the timing there, but you know, <laughs> we were lucky we got here on time. Yeah. But, so everyone's different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I felt like, um, you know, I was not that nervous beforehand. And then I was actually sitting watching the fights with my opponent about a half an hour before. So maybe 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 he thought i was too good too good a bloke to fight and <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the beautiful things about the fight for challenges they all build a relationship over that over that um eight weeks of training mm. and then they're fighting each other that was my kind of my strategy though w was it you who was telling me the story about one of one of your fighters who stan longer needies befriended and, the person before? and uh michael bernardo yeah michael <laughs> bernardo. beautiful strategy yeah befriended him and mike bernardo couldn't find him <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that is unreal. <laughs> Smart man, Stan. Yeah. So what's so what's on for the rest of the week? It's now obviously Monday. They're fighting on Friday. What are you guys doing until then? You mean the fighters themselves? Yeah. And well, a couple of them have got PTs. You know, they want to keep doing something every day. But I've warned them. I said, you have to walk out of here like you've done nothing. Mm. We'll do a very light session on Wednesday. They'll come in to the boxing board. On The boxing board comes here on 6.30 on Thursday, weighs them all in. How does that all work, that whole process? Well, on Thursday, when they walk in here, that's when we tell them who they're fighting because they don't know. They might have an idea because of different weights and because of the, the people around the same weight and the same capabilities, but they don't really know. We give them the order. We just call out a person's name and then say, and his opponent, and they walk out and get weighed up. Mm. You know, face off for the photos. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I remember that face off. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's that's an official thing. It has to be done. Boxing board requires that you weigh in twenty four hours before the fight. Mm. And the face off is more just to the face just off is, the face off is for the production. Mm. Just have a face off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They show the, they show their pictures up on the big screen when they just walk. Just so we can all put it on our various social media accounts. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> and for a souvenir. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, they keep all their photos for the souvenirs and yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. Have Have you ever had anybody who's pulled out just before the fight? Yes, we have. We what have. It's there? very rare. It's very rare. Uh, someone, someone's nerves just got too much for them, mm. too much for them, and and just hasn't rocked up. Oh, really? Yep. Avoided phone out. calls, things like that. Yeah. Wow. It happens sometimes. Usually, it doesn't happen. Usually, it doesn't happen. It's 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 really disappointing when that does happen because their opponents can't fight. What's the most What's the most common thing that you see in in people, as in like obstacles that they have to overcome mentally or physically? Uh, the most common thing is injuries. Yeah, yeah. Usually shoulder injuries from picking. A lot of people haven't done that much before, and then then, them. then then a big workout. Mm-hmm. A big work, big workload causes injuries, but as I say, it's it's not it's it's emotions that they've got to overcome so much, and it's an injury that makes people scared. I've got an injured injury, but as I say, most pros fight with injuries. Very rarely do they walk in totally injury free. Yeah, the same yeah, as football tra- players. Training so intense. Yeah, same yeah. as footy players. You tell me a footy player that doesn't go out with some little corky somewhere or a finger that's yep. still or a wrist that's sore. Everybody does. Yep. And, you know, I, I let them know that. I said, your opponent's probably got an injury too, you know. Mm-hmm. Your opponent was probably sick a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. You know? and, and what would you say is the thing that is the most overwhelming response in terms of positive impacts that it has on people's lives? Oh, everyone is so happy afterwards. It's, it's a big achievement because it's so frightening. If you can overcome your fears in one aspect of your life, you can overcome your fears in other aspects of your life as well. And that's what people come to me and oh, I never thought I'd be able to do that, especially four weeks out. I was so scared, especially coming up to that fight. I was so scared. And then, then all of a sudden they're just so excited. So sometimes other problems come along, which once upon a time they might have thought were insurmountable. And it's really not so insurmountable. They know they can overcome them. Mm. those fears because they've done it in such a physical primal way i suppose mm. yeah yeah it's interesting because i think it's it's so important like that's what life's all about taking those challenges and being you know spontaneous and stepping out of your comfort zone so to have that sort of impact that trickle down effect that you know having a boxing fight can completely transcend just having a boxing fight yeah we live, we live in, in a life. very 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 easy society mm. Once upon a time, we were cavemen, and every day we had to go out and hunt. And you tell me that wouldn't be exciting? Mm. That would be exciting. Mm. That would be scary. And what do we do here? We sit in front of the telly. And this brings us back to those days of you know, early mankind. When we, and we are built for excitement. Mm. We have to be excited. We have to have excitement. It, it, it makes us human. Constantly moving around, yeah, not knowing where your next meal is going to come from, yeah, yeah, it's the life and, of a boxer. <laughs> and and we can live in Australia and not ha- and not have any excitement. Yeah, a big excitement is watching a scary movie on TV or something. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's it's very important, I think, mentally, for us to do this sort of thing. That's why people play footy. 
That's why people jump out of planes. Yeah, this so, is quite an extreme sort of. I mean, playing footy is is different to having a boxing have, having a boxing match. I feel. I feel so many oh, people play yeah, footy, but then having a boxing yeah, match. Yeah, this is another level because yeah. it's one man, one person yeah. against another person. Yeah. There's, and that's primal. Yeah. Yeah. The Dean yeah. Daleks commented a few things. He said, does watching all the Rocky movies help with training? <laughs> of course it does, Dean. <laughs> and he said, can we get Tosca's opinion on the podcast, please? <laughs> Yeah, we need an interpreter for Tosca because he tweaks. He's got his worst his worst in mind at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe I don't want to hear his opinion on the, on the podcast. I hope he likes it. I won't no. say anything mean about Tosca. No, don't. <laughs> no, he's a good bloke. Anyways, thank you so much for coming on, Paul. Good luck to everybody who's doing the Fight Fit Challenge this Friday night. Would you like to give any last words of wisdom or encouragement to the Fight Fit Challenge of course. participants? That's what I always say. <laughs> Beats watching TV. <laughs> Have fun and be happy. <laughs> That's right. Thanks so much, mate. Good on you. Pleasure, mate. Take care. Pleasure. Good job, boys. Very good. I'm in the next shit on bread.